Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. And a special thanks to Hank for inviting Debbie and I to talk at this symposia. I look forward to hopefully chatting with some of you at the end of the talk with some questions. So a brief overview. In essence, I want to highlight the work of the Species File Group, it's our small research unit, in a way that would encourage you to collaborate with us or perhaps come up with some interesting ideas on your own, given what you've seen from what we're doing. I'll do a little bit of show and tell and a little bit of philosophizing and see where it goes. To start, we can step back and remember why we're doing all this informatics, this number crunching, uh, this algorithm building. Uh, we're trying to address real problems, right? We're trying to find the biomaterial to save a life. We're trying to find the source of the coronavirus or, uh, you know, we can think grand. We're trying to find an inventory of life that we're going to bring with us when we go to Mars. And the broader approach to tackling these problems, as sort of envisioned by Rod Page here, you've probably seen this if you've been to most any of the biodiversity informatics conferences in the, the recent past, is to build a knowledge base, uh, a graph of life, to, so to speak, and uh, to mine it for answers or to feed it new answers as we go about our work. And that's more or less what the species file group does. We build interfaces so that biologists can uh, feed the knowledge graph. We support a lot of collaborations with people that are doing the, the core science, uh, recording the observations, cataloging the species. Uh, we build algorithms to do these kind of things faster. We work on standards and ontologies to we can better understand and, and uh, assign data to the graph of life. And we do a fair bit of outreach where we uh, train people and just basically try to grow the general community. We can start looking at what we do by highlighting the Global Names Project. This is work by Dima Mozeran. Um, and with all the examples that I'm doing here uh, in, the, in the presentation today, you can go to the URL at the bottom of the page to learn more. I'm really just scratching the surface uh, of these efforts. So over the past decade or so, Dimitri has built an infrastructure focused on working with taxon names. Uh, these are the names that we give to the species on Earth. His work is a wonderful example of how to do biodiversity informatics. His software architecture is world class. It's documented. There's unit tests. Uh, it's modular, and it and overall, why you know why it's so great is it it works and it works very very quickly. So to highlight his work in action, uh, this is a project that we wrapped up about a year and a half ago, maybe longer, it's hard to know now. Um, with the Hathi Trust, this is the organization that's essentially building a huge corpus of publications, both uh, accessible but also those behind copyright uh, laws so that you can access those for research purposes um, and do work. And what we did essentially is try to parse their whole corpus and create an index of taxon names. And the end result was a one terabyte index that uh, has lots of opportunity for doing informatics research on. We did this on a supercomputer. Um, and there's some interesting outcomes of this, one of which is that the time it took uh, between the start of a parse run and the end of a parse run in that block of time, the target corpus grows by about 40,000 documents. And so that has consequences for how fast we can do real time indexing of taxon names. So another project we have is Nomen. It's an ontology of the rules of nomenclature. So Nomen was built for various reasons, but perhaps the main one was to unify the different ways that people, and these are primarily taxonomists, have recorded the various statuses or attributes of their taxon names. Uh, we do a lot of migrating of bespoke and legacy data formats into new platforms, and we really needed a structure to unify those data. So Nomen has been in use for about five years now. It's uh, open source, it's on GitHub there, it's found on BioPortal, and we'd love to have your contributions to it as well. So we collaborate with a lot of small research teams, and you can think of these collaborations as variously parts of different informatics pipelines. Um, one of our group's primary end targets, thanks to its founder, has been the Catalog of Life, and Yuri and Jeff uh, both parts of our team, uh, work with over a hundred different data providers, um, some supported directly by us, others coming from major biodiversity efforts like worms, uh, and they work to basically populate the catalog of life, the catalog of the Earth species. 
So having this collective work in house, so to speak, helps us uh, refine or speed refinements to our software and the, and sort of speed refinements to things like Nomen uh, because we're basically close to those using the tools and needing those tools uh, interacting with the pipeline itself. So because we have our fingers in the pipeline uh, in, in a bunch of different places, the ontology building, the data gathering, the tool building, uh, we have an opportunity to do some really fun things for meetings like this or you know to sort of experiment so thanks to Dmitry Dmitriev he's another member another Dmitry in our group uh, and his collaborators uh, we have about a million nomenclatural assertions about the nomenclature of the earth's cicadas plant hoppers and tree hoppers these are the echinorhynchia uh, thanks to nomen and taxon works these data are in a graph data structure literally uh, the mathematical graph adds node, nodes edges um, and so I've been meaning to try visualizing this graph of life data uh, that we collaborate in for some time and this was a nice opportunity to do it um, so how this graph was built the data and the additional images are all available via the link below so what gets me excited about this kind of work is I think there's a lot of opportunities for people in the more uh, informatics based fields to take these kind of data and these kind of approaches and really run with it and really do their own sort of projects on them. So there's lots of opportunities with this kind of data for doing things like subgraph analysis, looking at uh, doing diffs between networks, looking at how to visualize these large graphs, thinking about how we're going to optimize queries that go across these graphs, and thinking about taking these graphs and sort of formalizing them or, or serializing them as RDF so that they can be combined in that bigger vision, in that grander vision of the graph of life uh, in general. Time for a little side note. We all know that biodiversity informatics has a zillion ongoing discussions about identifiers, what they are, how to use them. It goes on and on, right? It's a black hole. So overall, we have found that by emphasizing the difference between the two types of identifiers, local and global, and their various subtypes within each side, um, we, we get a better Gra more grounded uh, set of assumptions and expectations of what a, an identifier can do for us. So the idea is, is that perhaps we shouldn't worry about identifiers very precisely identifying some things, but instead acknowledge that identifiers will only get us so far. And I think that that can be somewhat of a freeing concept if we embrace it in general. To wrap up the talk, I'd like to highlight just a couple of use cases or potential opportunities where the broader informatics community might want to collaborate with our group. So first off, we spend a lot of time building a workbench called TaxonWorks. Uh, this essentially lets domain biologists curate their data, uh, lets taxonomists do their work. So I think there are a lot of opportunities for the broader informatics community to participate within the reach of this project. Uh, some of the ideas are up here on the top right. Um, and we've really tried to uh, create an infrastructure that makes the whole project accessible to those who want to engage it. So next, two quick examples that are sort of the classic um, train an AI to extract information from an image type approaches. We've got one where we've got around 500,000 digitized cards that contain nomenclatural information and all of that data has been parsed out over the years. So you've got accessible data, you've got an image data set, uh, it would make a nice training project. Uh, a second is just the exact same idea. We have a whole pile of staged images that have been curated uh, into pieces and the data have been extracted. So we've got what you kind of consider a gold standard. Rich Flood has helped work on the interfaces here, a member of our group. Again, uh, I think you're all familiar with the idea of taking some gold standard data and training an AI with that data. Okay, one last bit of uh, musing to interject. Um, it's certainly not a new idea, but I think we're seeing within the community of users that we serve some frustrations with the nature of sharing and recording our data in rows. Uh, in particular, when we share data in rows, it becomes difficult to figure out, you know, what is the same. We need many different tools to figure this out. Um, so in a row of data, right, 
for example, in a Dove and Core here, we have many different attributes, but those attributes map to sort of many different things. Um, if you're listening to the hum of the internet chatter, so to speak, from the biodiversity informatics community at all different levels, I think you'll see a lot of discussion that is pushing us to think more about things and therefore sort of closer to that graph of life concept that we mentioned at the beginning of this talk. And so this leads me to the last use case, one that I hope will bring in collaborators um, that are doing the, the basic science. Uh, we've built just the tool that we've talked about, um, the one that lets us go from rows of data, in this case Darwin Core rows, to things in TaxonWorks. And we're excited to see this live, and we expect it will sort of unlock TaxonWorks for a lot of different users. So to conclude, I hope I've given you some ideas about the kind of uh, opportunities you might have interacting with our group. Um, there's a lot that can be done with us or just in general in the field right now. And that leads me to sort of encourage us to keep framing what we do in the sort of context of the scientific questions that we're trying to tackle. So things like what is the source of the coronavirus? How do I build an inventory of life to bring to Mars? Where is the biomaterial to save a life? I think in the grand scheme of things, we can get lost in the various different directions that we could be headed. There's many different ways. And sometimes coming back to the question can keep us grounded. So of course, none of this was possible without a huge number of collaborators. And you can go get a feel for who those people are by their contributions to our open source projects. Um, in that's probably the best way to get a feel for that. Um, and we'd like to hear from you. So please get in touch. Thanks much.